The race car world gets turned on its head in 1969 with the Stetson 240Z by Ravel. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello everybody and welcome back to another amazing Monster Hobbies model car review as we take a look at the 1969 Datsun 240Z by Ravel. And this is another one of those amazing model kits that has come out a few times. So before we go and take a look at what's underneath the lid here, let's take a look at some of those great old box top pictures and then we'll get right into our review. The history of the Japanese motorsports really begins with the holding of the first Japanese Grand Prix in 1963. This would be on the newly formed Suzuka circuit. In 1969, Datsun came up with a new car, which they introduced as a 70 model, and it was the Datsun 240Z, or otherwise known in Japan as the Nissan Fairlady 240Z. It was designed much like the American cars, with that kind of design, and it was the first car from Datsun to include the six cylinder, which they took the four cylinder and added two cylinders onto it. So, looking at this great model kit from Ravel, we can see, of course, a photo of the real car. And it's interesting to note that this kit came out in 1971. That was the initial release in stock formation. And then it later became Pete Brock's uh, Brie Datsun 240Z. And then in this year, it came back. This is 2002, so we got the stock version back again then. All right, so looking at the box, I know that was a bit lengthy, but interesting history. We have, of course, the features of the model kit. It's six and a half inches long. There's a hundred pieces molded in white. You got silk screen water slide decals, and of course it gives you the history. Detailed 2.4 liter six cylinder engine, optional roll bar and rear spoiler, race style decal graphics, molded in white and clear with chrome plated parts and black vinyl tires. Also gives you on the box all the different colors you can paint this thing in. Now just zoom back a bit. This side of the box is the built model kit which of course you can see looks pretty cool. And then as we turn it over here, this is a skill level two kit. It's gonna require your paint and glue. And with a little zoom in magic, we can see the awesome looking straight six, as well as those custom decals sitting on the back here. And then of course, zooming back out again, <laughs> there's our uh, Datsun with the decals just for a different view, sort of a tuner style, I guess. And then we get back to the top of the box. My cousin had one of these as a real car. His was blue. Anyway, moving the lid off, we can see our cool instruction sheet here. And just so you know, I bought this at PM Hobbies, that's in Calgary, on May 22nd, 2004 for $14.99. This is just maybe a month or so before I actually opened Monster Hobbies. We opened, it was June 4th, 2004. Our decal sheet is there. And just like the Datsun 510, I'm noticing the decals are cracking. So that's no fun. All right, we have our plastic body piece. It needs to get some of this removed. Window glass. Chrome, glorious chrome. Then we've got our white parts. <laughs> okay, I'll stop that. Uh, some more clear here with the headlights and other goodies we'll get into. There's, there goes the tire. There's all our interior components. Looking good. And then of course we have our car components, engines and batteries, 
all kinds of fun goodies. Our four tires here. And that's it. So what I'll do, of course, as usual, is clear this away and then we'll get looking at those instructions. Welcome back model car fans and here we take another look at the wonderful instructions for our Datsun 240Z. And as you saw in the box tops before, the most recent edition of this kit reverted back again to the Brie Datsun 240Z, Pete Brock's car. So this edition in 2002 is the last edition currently of the stock Datsun 240Z. So here we have a great big write-up on all of it and where is it it says in here there Datsun Styles came up with a winner the 240z first introduced in 1969 as a 70 model so that's where I got that from okay so we open this up and of course you can see this is one of those big fold-out instruction sheets again so I'm gonna break this up video you know visually so I'm not ruffling pages, if I can talk. <laughs> so here we have aluminum, flat black, lost black, and the other paint colors. And that's on our page one. So now let's just open this up here. And we'll get into our engine and everything else. Step one, we have the engine assembly, which shows our six-cylinder engine with the transmission halves gluing together, and the fuel pump, which is a chrome component, gluing into the side of the block. Then we have our great valve cover going up across here, and our long oil pan going on the bottom with the front engine cover. Over here we have two sets of pulleys. One, of course, is the fan belt and pulley, and the second is the air conditioning, which you get a pretty cool car in this one. And then we have our fan here, and then in D, we're putting on our intake manifolds with the dual carburetors and this long air cleaner. There's a little balance tube in here just to get the air pressures and everything right. And then this, as well as the exhaust manifold, glue onto the side of the engine. And as you can see, this is a nice multi-part affair. Section 2 is all about the suspension assembly, and here we get a good multi-piece front end with possibly steering suspension. We have a tie rod in here as well as our left suspension strut and right suspension strut as well as the front cross member. And then into the back we have the transmission here, or the rear differential, pardon me. The upper and lower housing. This of course is much like the Datsun 510 with the British influenced independent Jaguar rear axle. Uh, you get a rear mount here our lower axle housing here, and then the lower A braces, A frame braces, pardon me. Oh, the suspension carries on into a B part where you drop the sway bar in, and then everything down here goes onto that nice chassis, the front suspension, rear suspension, the drive shaft going in, shock absorbers pop on the back, there's a gas tank, the rear engine mount, and then your engine, the completed engine, pops in here last. So a very nice, of course, once you have all the suspension components in, you need to get exhaust out of your engine. So here we have the exhaust and radiator assemblies. So look at this multi-piece um, exhaust manifold here. You get left and right resonators with the exhaust tip, the tailpipe snaking through, top and bottom muffler, and then the front of the exhaust pipes which uh, are two pipes which cross over each other. Actually, that's kind of interesting. And then that hooks up all underneath that chassis. And then here you have a three-piece radiator. Well, two-piece with a hose. Um, the air conditioning radiator, and then the regular radiator. And then this drops into the chassis with your oil filter being mounted on the front wheel aprons. And then our coil mounted on the other front apron. It's a very interesting way to do it. Panel 4 is our interior detail assembly and here we have the firewall with the battery gluing into it, our brake master cylinder and our foot pedals, a gas pedal and two separate foot pedals for the clutch and the brake. And then the firewall will drop in behind here uh, we've got our shift lever dropping into the floor, as well as the handbrake, which is always nice. 
A quick dissolve into step five shows us our roll bar assembly. And you get a two-piece roll bar with, of course, the bigger part here and then the braces going back there, which will glue right into the back of our car. And there's a fire extinguisher that pops onto that center console. In panel six, we get more of the interior assembly. And here we have our dashboard with the steering column and the steering wheel, which has a wood grained ring on it. All the instruments get painted gloss black. And then there are decals you can drop in there for each of your instruments. There's a stock version as well as a tuner version with different numbers up there. Then we get a three piece front seats and as extra decals, which of course mine are wrecked, Arr! <laughs> you get the nice Z logo as, or Z logo, depending on which country you're in. And then these two panel inserts, which will go into the rib parts, which will look really cool. And then it also has a separate mounted or separate molded, pardon me, door panels. And here it shows the speakers going in to the door panels. Now we get into the wheel assembly. And these wheels are much like the AMT wheels with the wheel retainer going in here. You get an inner wheel, which you paint steel, the retainer goes in, and then your tire and your outer wheel, and it all sandwiches together nicely. And once that's complete, it glues right onto this pin on our suspension assembly. Panel 8 shows our body detail assembly, and here is where our left and right taillights will glue into the back panel. Our windows pop into the body, and the nose and the tail will glue in on the ends. Panel 9 shows our hood assembly, with of course the grill going on and these nice hinges being hooked into the hinge retainers. So these will swing up and out. And then there's our hood gluing on to the top with some more hood retainers up in that direction. And here we have hood assembly continued, continuation of step nine. The completed hood will slide in and lock on these pins here. And then our headlights and the turn signals will glue in into that front clip. Panel 10 brings us to our final assembly. The body will now pop in on the chassis. It says in order to attach a spoiler, the trunk emblem and latch details must be sanded off. That's for your tuner or the, the Brie car, uh, if you can find those decals. <laughs> so the spoiler will glue on there, and then we've got this nice rear bumper with these really long pins that pop in. There's our rear view mirror going on the side, and then the front bumper. Now, on that Nissan Fairlady, these rear view mirrors are mounted way up here on the front fenders. If you ever get to see a photograph of the Japanese version of this, Japan, they mounted all the mirrors like right over top of the front tires. So in order to see somebody coming up, you really have to look way out there to see them. If any of you guys have ever driven a car like that, let me know in the comments below just how like far you really need to look and stuff to see somebody coming up on your side there through those mirrors. Panel 11 shows your decal placement. Now there's two decal placements here, so we'll start with the stock version. And here they have this nice Datsun sticker right across the front of the window. Of course, to act sort of as a big sun visor. Shows you all the little decals to place on here. They do seem to have the turn signals. You have a choice of license place to pop on the back and all the rest. And our final image, of course, is the tuner version. And, you know, I can't really decide whether to build a stock or tuner, but I guess my cracked up decals will be the answer. It does look cool with the Datsun name right on the side here, as well as on the back in this stripe. The 240Z is accented again right here in this decal along the bottom. And then, of course, we've got our stripe going here. Oh, that is another decal that goes on top of the decal. Decal 6 must be applied before gluing the rear bumper in place. So there you go. Pretty cool, though. And that completes our look at the instruction sheet for our Revell. Datsun 240Z. Now, are you guys hungry to see the plastic parts? Clap your hands if you are. And here we have our little Datsun 240Z body. And when this car came to the North American shores in 1970, it became quite the terror for the Corvette because this car was really small, lightweight, and had a powerful six-cylinder motor in it, as we saw with the dual carburetors. So taking a look at this nice little body, of course, you can see 
our door handles, hooray! And then our Datsun logo right here, as well as our little turn signal lamps. It is done quite nicely. Another little turn signal lamp. Of course, we are missing our front nose on here. But you can see the nice crisp detail and everything that's on this kit. It is a little bit soft as far as some of the detailing goes on other kits I've shown on this show, I guess. Um, underneath there are some mold marks and a big seam line right across the front nose, actually. All this, of course, can be taken away with, guess what? Your number 16 hobby blade. That's right. And there are these big, huge uh, runners in here that need to be removed, cut off with your hobby saw and all the rest. But so far, this looks pretty promising as a model kit. And that brings us to our first white parts tree. And here we have all the interior components as well as some exterior and our chassis pan. This does look like our gas tank with spare tire going on here. There we've got our dashboard. There's that nice chassis, the hood, the firewall, the tail panel, and our door panels separately molded. And even though these are separately molded with the uh, exceptional door handles and everything, it's still kind of a soft mold. Keep in mind this is 1971. The plastic, you can almost see my finger through that license plate shroud. So it's a little bit thin there. Turning this over, of course, we have, well, that's really interesting, two gigantic pegs in here. Um, I'm not going to worry about those. There are a couple little mold marks on the tops of these, but should be easy to remove. A few under the hood. Looks like some of those need to be filled in. There's no mat under there. Um, yeah. Overall, quite nice though. You do get the North American dashboard mounted on the left-hand side, not the right, as Japanese would have it, or Japan. Um, and overall, very nicely done plastic parts. This parts tree gives us the engine and suspension components. Uh, here we have our six-cylinder engine block, the little retainers for our wheels, the wheel backs, the front suspension, the little hood hinges, battery, rear axle, differential covers, the little um, brakes there, master cylinder, radiator, steering column, all the braces, all the pedals, differential, rear suspensions, all kinds of good stuff. Cats and dogs getting along. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, nice detail on here again, kind of softly molded radiator has texture to it. You get the spark plugs sitting on the one side here and then your engine with the frost plugs on the other. Turning it over of course we find all our little mold marks and whatnot but there's going to be mold marks in all kits. It's just nice to know where they are and how high they stand. Great detail on suspension components and everything looks quite the way that a Datsun should look. And since we have some room for it in our photo frame here, photo frame, <laughs> I thought I'd show two sprue trees in here. This, of course, is basically a racing package with the roll bar, both the big one and the brace, as well as the rear spoiler, our fire extinguisher, and this little component here. Then we've got a front end sitting here as well as our seats in all their pieces, the radiator, because remember the other one was for our... Dun, 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 dun. It was for our air conditioner unit. There's our steering wheel, and then there's part of the exhaust setup. So, bringing this up to the camera, there is a bit of a sink mark, but it's on the inside of our... Here, let's move that... of our front clip. Looks like this should be fairly easy to pop into the car. Probably a little bit of cleanup off the back. Mold marks are all going to be covered up. Oh, there's those two posts for our seats to pop into. It was on the floorboards. Might need a little bit of uh, cleaning that up in there with uh, MDF and some sandpaper glued on it. Just to flatten it out when you glue them together. And then here's our roll bar and everything. Of course, all our mold marks are underneath, so this one is done really nicely. 
And then that, of course, is the last of our white components. Next, we get into my favorite components, which, of course, are the chrome components. It's kind of interesting here. We have our fan and pulley belts in chrome. There's our fan. Then we've got our cylinder head here. And then the front grill, the cool little wheels, as well as some engine components, front bumpers, and that cool air cleaner. There's our exhausts, which is kind of nice that they're all chrome. So I'll just bring this up so we can see the detail. There's not too much actually to this kit. But there, you can see how nice and crisp it is. See what I mean? The chrome belts. <laughs> the pulleys look nice. All chromed up. Okay, there's our bumpers and everything. Turning it over, a couple of mold marks, but you could get rid of those and then paint all this flat black in here. This is back of your grill. Um, yeah. I don't mean to get all up in your grill, but there's the grill there. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Silly joke. Okay, that is our chrome. Now here's our windows for our 1969 Datsun 240Z. And, interestingly enough, these are different from your AMT style, where they would have a runner here, and a runner there, and inside here would be hollow. This is all one big flat piece on top of your roof, which is kind of nice in a way, because once you get rid of these mold marks, and the serial number and all that, you could paint the upper inside portion here, uh, whatever your interior color is, and then glue this piece right to the roof. And then there's no kind of bumps and humps and discolorment and all the rest of this kind of weird stuff that you'd get with one of the older AMT kits. But this would actually be like the flat roof inside. So you get your rear window, your side windows, and your front windshield all as one piece. And over here we have our taillights molded in clear, but... What's nice about that is you can use red paint, <laughs> Tamiya, of course, <laughs> and leave one of the little bits open for your backup lights. Then there's your headlights and the side marker turn signal type lights. So I don't think we need that one, but this one up to the camera, there's all your little details in there. Whoops. Okay, hang on. There. I don't know. I'm not getting it. There we go. Right at that level. So yeah, you get your little lights in here so you can mask these off or carefully paint around them for your orange and your red and then of course a clear backup light. The headlights have little pegs off the back so they'll pop into the holes in the front grille. And basically it's fairly simple but it will of course give you some glass. Here we have our tires for this model kit, and these ones are without any side markings, so they're not Goodyear, Firestone, or anybody. And, yeah, like on both sides, they're pretty blank. They're almost like the Johan tires didn't have any, any names on them, some of them. Although you do get a nice tread up the middle, so it's not just, you know, a big rubber, bald, blank, no-name type tire. But uh, what more can be said about them? Finally, we get our decal sheet. Oh, and it's kind of nice here. They actually give you a black version and a white version for our decals. So maybe I could build this as a tuner, but I might be limited to one color or the other, depending on how badly things are cracked. There's our window sticker for, of course, the stock version, but you could also use this on your tuner. We've got some California license plates as well as some from Illinois with Z1. And then for California, we've got VVX840. Uh, there's our decals for the speakers for the door panels. Then we've got turn signal lamps. And then all the little names and everything. And these are our bucket seats, the decals for those. And then we have the instrument panels, one for uh, the regular car and then the tuner. Looks to me like they have red numbers on the tuner, whereas the stock one was white. So maybe this is supposed to be like a LED type, you know, um, instrument. <laughs> I kind of lost my train of thought there. So let's bring this up to the camera. Maybe we can see those instruments there. I'm not too sure. See the white Datsun 240Z. I'll have to inspect these for cracks and hope that they're not going to 
hit the water and obliterate. Um, anyway, so there's all that cool stuff. Oh, even the door handles. So you could shave off all the trim on this and replace them all with decals. But still a very nice effort from 2002. And that completes our look at our Ravel Datsun 240Z model kit. And if you've built this model in the past, please let us know how you enjoyed building it down in our comment section below. And if you want to show us the pictures of your build, please do so on our Monster Hobbies Facebook page. Well, I hope you enjoyed this great unboxing video for the week. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with all your friends and family so that every time I make a new video, you are the first one to know. But first, you got to hit that notification bell, because if you don't, you won't know. Anyway, don't forget to check out our current model car kits that are now available. This one's not. This one's mine. It's an oldie. But you can check out the new ones anyway at www.monster-hobbies.ca. There's some really cool stuff on there and new stuff coming all the time. So until next time, everybody, happy model building.